everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about optimizing your anatomy and coordination so that you can take an effective inhalation for singing. So my apologies to all of you who've been holding your breath this whole time. We're finally going to now talk about exhaling or releasing the breath for singing and talk about the anatomy and coordination involved in that. When singers and voice teachers talk about breathing for singing, what we're often discussing is support or breath management. But as I mentioned earlier, if you want to manage your breath, you have to have some breath to manage. So before we get into all of that, which I promise to do in the next video, it's important to really optimize the way that you're inhaling and then releasing your breath for singing. And then after you've gotten really good at that and you understand the anatomy involved, then we can start fine tuning how you regulate your breath. But today we're just gonna talk about releasing the breath. When we exhale, we passively release the muscles of inspiration. So let's just do a quick review of how those muscles of inspiration work. When we inhale, the diaphragm contracts and it releases when we exhale, returning to a relaxed position. The same is true for our intercostal muscles and most of the accessory muscles that assist with inhalation. They're active when we breathe in and then they're passive when we exhale. While it is possible, of course, to forcibly expel your breath, for example, by squeezing with your abdominal muscles or maybe drawing your ribs in, letting your sternum collapse, today we're not gonna talk about pushing breath out or anything that we might do to expel the breath. I want us to focus today on what happens when you just passively release the breath. This is a very important component of any breath management system, but it's counterintuitive because when we release the breath, it feels like you're not really doing anything because it's passive. However, if you took a well-coordinated full inhalation, when you passively release the breath, your breath is doing a lot. Breath management refers to what we do to optimize our subglottal breath pressure. I'm going to talk about this more in greater detail in the next video, uh, but for our purposes, I just want to define what that means. Um, optimizing your subglottal breath pressure really just means balancing the forces that accelerate or decelerate the release of the breath from your lungs. Well, as it turns out, the most powerful force we have to accelerate the release of air from our lungs is not through any muscular activity at all. It's provided by the tissue that comprises the lungs themselves. Blandine Calais Germain does a great job of describing pulmonary elasticity in her book, Anatomy of Breathing. She says, most exhalations are caused by the elasticity of the lungs. Thus, the force applied to expiration is mostly an elastic force rather than a muscular one. Our lung tissue resists inhalation. That's why it's a muscular process to draw air into our lungs because they were actually getting some resistance from the lung tissue itself. The tissue that comprises our lungs is actually not so different from the rubber that this balloon is made out of. Right now, the air pressure inside the balloon is a lot greater than the air pressure outside the balloon, which means that if I stop pinching the opening, the air is just going to come flying out without my having to push it out at all. Right? And now it's gone. Um, because the rubber of the balloon just wants to return to a relaxed state, and so since there's nothing obstructing the opening, the air just comes flying out. So, the more fully you inhale, the greater the expiratory force you generate just by inhaling because the fuller your lungs are, the fuller this balloon is, the greater the pressure inside the container is going to be and the more it's going to want to get out. All right, I'll stop that. But you can see that even though there's very little air that escaped from this balloon, just that little bit of resistance that I was able to create by stretching the top of the balloon produced quite an obnoxious loud sound and I could have sustained it for a while if you look at all the air that's in this balloon. So I invite you to take a moment to just consider that. If like the strongest expiratory force you have is nothing to do with what you're going to do with your abdominal muscles or your ribs or anything else, but just the tissue that your lungs are made out of, and you can generate this really impactful sublevel breath pressure just by taking a well-coordinated breath and then permitting it to release. Just think about how much easier your breath management system, your whole, all the effort that you're not gonna have to expend to regulate your sublevel breath pressure if you can just harness this force and figure out how to use it skillfully. So here's an exercise for exhalation. I want you to just take a good breath and then let it go. So breathe in and 
Just saw your breath out. Try that again. So that's how you exhale. You have a lot of practice doing this already. What's special about exhaling through your singing is that you're going to need to do it in a way that does not compromise your alignment. So let's try that again, uh, but maintain a high sternum and stable shoulders. And so if I keep my shoulders retracted and I just allow my sternum to remain in sort of a dynamically elevated position, I can breathe in and, and sigh without having my sternum drop, without having my shoulders doing anything. So try that again. Now this part requires a little bit of effort. It's important to strengthen and coordinate the muscles that stabilize your shoulders so that you can maintain good alignment while you're breathing. It's important to get good at stabilizing your shoulders while you sing. Strengthening your rhomboids and your middle and lower trapezius will keep your shoulders retracted and stable so that you can allow your sternum to remain in a dynamically elevated position while you exhale. Check below the video, I'll post some exercises to help you do this. The breath generates vocal fold vibration in accordance with the Bernoulli principle. The Bernoulli principle is often referenced in vocal pedagogy to explain how air in constant motion produces an air pressure differential below and above the glottis to create the suction that produces periodic vocal fold vibration. After a full inhalation, the air pressure below the vocal folds is greater than the air pressure above them, so when the vocal folds are sufficiently adducted while remaining pliant, releasing breath through the resulting narrow aperture alternately sucks them together and escapes between them, generating a vibratory cycle. If you'd like to learn more about the Bernoulli Principle, um, here's a link where you can watch a video. This was taken from a 1969 TV show called Demonstrations in Physics, and the guy in the video is Professor Julius Sumner Miller. Enjoy. While breath management is important, it's really of secondary importance to learning how to take a well-coordinated inhalation and then learning to just release and exhale while maintaining good alignment. The natural elasticity of your lungs is going to provide a very high quality of subglottal breath pressure that's going to do most anything you need to do to at least start the sound. Once you can do that well, once you've figured out how to just let your body do what it naturally does with the breathing, then we can build on that. Breath management should really be um, in addition to what it is that, that your body is doing naturally when you inhale and exhale. And once all of this is going well, then we can talk about how to do some subtle things to regulate your sublevel breath pressure. That's gonna make your dynamics a little bit easier, maybe give you a little bit more stamina. But in the meantime, just let your body do what it naturally does. Don't try to second guess what the breath pressure should be by micromanaging things with your abdominal muscles or with your rib cage. Um, you might be able to do a pretty good job of regulating your breath pressure that way, but it's gonna cost you a lot more work and it's probably never gonna be as efficient as just allowing your body to do what it's designed to do once you optimize the parts of your anatomy that are designed to just inhale and exhale that you've had a lot of practice doing your whole life. Aus alten Werken bin ich, das erfordert die Weizenhand, der Seeding fremd und der Krieg, das von einem Zauberland. 